Good evening, everybody. This is the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I'm Reverend Oscar Sinclair. This is Reverend Kimberly Debus, our affiliate minister. I am delighted to be talking to you this evening. Um, we've started doing these, uh, these interviews that go up on YouTube, mostly, uh, if I'm honest, as a chance for me to talk to people that I like to talk to. <laughs> Um, that's, that's how it started was, was me at about 3 a.m. going, I really want to call up these four people and see how they're doing. And, oh, well, we should probably record those and, and get them in front of the congregation. So that's what we're doing. Um, and, uh, and today, um, we've got Kimberly Davis, who she and I were ministers together on Long Island. Yes, we were. <laughs> Um, and now we are ministers of a kind together um, in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, which we'll talk a little bit about what that means uh, in a moment. Um, but before we do all that, um, Kimberly, I just want to ask, how, how are you doing these days? Hmm. I'm, you know, I'm okay. Um, I just finished a sabbatical ministry in White Plains, New York. Um, and for those who don't know, White Plains is right there in the middle of Westchester County, a few miles from where really the epicenter of, of the New York cases was. And some of our congregants lived in the New Rochelle containment area and went to schools or taught at schools where there were cases. Um, so, so the March was was all pandemic all the time and the transition then to to give the congregation back to their settled minister the reverend meredith garman was was interesting um you know there was a little bit of oh i kind of left them in the middle of a crisis and i know i left them in good hands um so <laughs> adjusting back to life at home, which is um, in upstate New York, near Saratoga Springs, New York, um, was was different because suddenly I wasn't in the 24-hour rush of a congregation in the middle of a pandemic. And so right. um, figuring out what that looks like. Um, but I got home safely. Um, I live in a beautiful Victorian home with my sister and three cats. So we spent two weeks being, you know, very distant and, and you know, sort of circling each other. And when the two weeks of travel isolation was over, we just like hugged because we could for the first time in two, in, well, more than two weeks, but um, it made a difference. So, um, but I'm okay. You know, it's, um, you know, every transition is, has its good and bad things. Um, but physically, I'm all right, except for allergies, because that's real here in the Northeast. Um, I don't know if you go through it there in Lincoln, but holy cow, everything is in bloom. Yep. Um, and, yep. um, you know, I'm thrilled to be doing this call this evening. Yeah, no, it's, it's fun. Um, Yeah, upstate New York is beautiful this time of year. It, yeah. In in Lincoln, this is like two out of the eight nice weeks we get all year long. Mm. It is early April. Okay. Um, before it gets really hot over the summer or really cold in the in the yeah. there's this precious little time. <laughs> yeah. There's something yeah, upstate New York has this really interesting well, it has really interesting springs and falls. Because mm -hmm. there's a transition, and we're right at that point where I am, where the the trees are are not quite bedded yet, the or the leaves aren't quite out. They're 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 still in bud. So so there's a there's a sort of red and this this dark yet light green thing that, and it and it hangs there for a little bit, and little by little. You know, the forsythia begin to bloom and, and you begin to see the, you know, a little bit of green on this tree and the, and the birch go and, and, and it's, a, and it's an emerging. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it's really fascinating, you know, at some point, and you know, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks before we start seeing the dogwoods. Yep. Go and you know, it's, it happens definitely over time. <clears throat> and there's a, there's an anticipation when you see the, the trees, you know, the edges turn a little red or a little, you know, just this difference of color and haze to it all. It's, it's fascinating. I love spring upstate. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about today um, was the fact that as of about a year ago now, um, you are the affiliate minister of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I am. <laughs> and, and we had this grand plan for you to come out to Nebraska in June for a week and, uh, and get introduced to the congregation and talk about what affiliation is and do a bunch of programming together. And we probably will not be hosting you in person in June. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's, everything is very different. So, yeah. you know, so, so my, my ministry is what we call a um, community ministry. So I, I'm not the minister of one congregation the way Oscar is the minister of your congregation, but rather I serve the denomination in many congregations my focus is worship and the arts, so I do a lot of consultations with people, putting together worship services. I help develop worship services, and I was on the um, worship planning team for General Assembly for three years, so help plan those big worship. Um, I do a lot of preaching in congregations, um, although that looks different now, and I do a lot of workshops, and then I do um, sabbatical ministry. So I would go to a congregation for between two and six months and be their minister while their minister goes on sabbatical. So that's what I just finished in White Plains. But we're in this time where I'm not traveling every weekend to Braintree, Massachusetts and Rockville, Maryland and wherever else in Lincoln, Nebraska. <clears throat> I'm home in Round Lake in my office in our little Victorian home and rethinking what that is. The workshops are going away, all of the big sort of week-long things, General Assembly, the, the summer institutes, all these opportunities that normally come up for us every year are, are canceled. Um, and so, um, you know, not being able to come out to Lincoln in June really puts this hole of like, okay, well, how can I be of use? What can I do? Because the truth is, I'm as close to you all sitting in Round Lake as I would, you know, as Oscar is sitting right. in his home in Lincoln. Right. Um, That's an interesting truth to this moment, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, and, I, and I've really been wrestling with, with this, you know, how can I be of use? And affiliation with a congregation is in part about, it's certainly in part about how we go through our ministerial formation process. Mm -hmm. um, like Oscar, I'm in preliminary fellowship, which means that there's renewals and there's sort of the checking in, you know, to get tenure, I always think of it, right? You know, <laughs> it's right. Like we're, working, we're working on getting tenure. Um, but there's also a relationship. And because Oscar and I have now known each other for several years, we already had a relationship that our, my being your affiliate minister sort of solidifies. Right. But it also means that I'm, even though I'm uh, far away from you, I'm uh, part of you. Right. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the things we were talking about before we started recording um, that I find really uh, incredible about having an affiliate minister is is the capacity to to collaborate with a colleague of mine um, where we both have commitments to the same congregation yeah. so so when you and I are talking about what's going on in Lincoln Nebraska um, if we're in if we're in this affiliate um, parish role or, or roles then that conversation is happening with the assumption that we both have the best interests of the congregation 
at the forefront of our mind. And that's, Absolutely. that's a really amazing thing yeah. to be able to have those conversations and, and, and think through right. some challenging stuff sometimes. Right. Um, right. You know, it, it's so meaningful to me to have a congregation that I've done some things with and a colleague that I'm helping in some way share a ministry with, but that you are thinking about my ministry too. Oh, for sure. How can yeah. we, you know, what I do reflects on you. So when I'm doing, you know, great stuff, my bio in, it includes you because I am affiliated with you. Um, and when I do crappy things, I leave you off. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, teasing, teasing. Oh. Um, but it, yeah, it, it, that relationship matters. Um, and for me to be your affiliate minister, to, as I'm speaking to the congregation, is it's meaningful because my experiences with you were so rich and warm. And I always felt both, and this may sound funny, but both respected and held in the times that I was with you all. Sure. And that continues. So there are members of the congregation who are on my committee who hold me and think, you know, watch my ministry and, and, you know, we'll be looping in on how do I, how can I be of use to Lincoln? Right. Um, and I don't, you know, we don't know what that looks like yet. <laughs> we don't yet. Um, We've been, we've been putting so many things together sort of on the fly. And I think this is true of just about every church in the country right now, um, that it feels like now that we've been doing this a month, it feel, I feel at least like, I, I think I know how we do worship now. Yes. And, and so, so now we have the capacity to say, well, what, what might we start adding? Like what, what, can we do to make this thing that we've built rapidly and out of chewing gum and, and bailing wire? Yeah. Um, how do we make it richer? Um, and, and one of the things uh, I'm wondering if you can talk about that I, I think has been a part of your ministry for a long time is thinking about how to make the experience of worship a, a rich one oh. and, and a complex one. In, yeah. In a way that's not just a person standing up and preaching for 20 minutes. Right. Right. Well, and it, you know, I think one of the struggles with virtual worship is exactly that. So already one of our struggles as Unitarian Universalists is to be bringing our whole bodies into worship. And right. so getting more comfortable with with ritual and movement and and that kind of connection and suddenly when we are all looking at a screen where are our bodies in that and how are we doing ritual together and so i've been playing with a little bit ways that we can do rituals together and some of that requires some prep mm -hmm. you know it might require everybody to have you know pen and paper with them when they come to worship or, you know, a glass of water or a piece of fruit or, you know, have some things there to then do and we can do them together. Um, Cause I think that there, there's still, I, I think it's even more important that we figure out how are we bringing our whole bodies into worship when we're, if we're not leading it, we're wearing our PJs sitting on our couch with our coffee. Right. Um, which is great. I wish we could all do that. <laughs> um, but, um, but I think there's some interesting challenges there. Um, yeah. But I think there are also some really cool invitations. There are things that we can do virtually in terms of showing images that, that accompany our sermons, um, highlighting music and, and videos from other places, um, ways that we can bring in some other resources that we don't necessarily do on a Sunday morning. Um, mm -hmm. So that's interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the really gratifying things for me just in the last two weeks is I, both of the last two Sundays, I've not been the only ministerial voice in the service. Yeah. Two weeks ago, Michelle LaGrave, 
gave a reflection as part of our service. And then last week, um, Kendall Gibbons, who's, oh. who's the minister at All Souls Kansas City, wrote this incredible reflection on on Easter in mm -hmm. the time of COVID nineteen. And and she hadn't she hadn't gotten her her own recording of it up by the time we uh, we we recorded. Um, so I was reading her words, um, mm -hmm. but it was incredible to to feel, you know, over a couple of weeks that, that this is we are part of a broader tradition and and in Absolutely. some ways we're more available to each other than we ever have been i mean you're oh you're next door yeah now. <laughs> if we don't have exactly to exactly to, to preach it which we will absolutely do once this once yeah fly again but but for right now um yeah we're very interconnected um yeah. right that's right that's right well, it, you know, and I'm thinking about things like the the workshops we had talked about doing um, right. and the, the discussions and such we had talked about doing when I was there, which can still happen. And they just look different. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I'm open to, you know, whatever we, we dream up even beyond worship, you know, yeah. do, do I do a weekly you know, spiritual practice thing with you all. Do I, you know, do I help out sometimes on a Thursday worship? Um, you know, do, do Oscar and I still have our our big theological conversations about about hymns? I hope we do. I hope we do. Um, <laughs> I hope we do. Somebody other than me to sing them. <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> um yeah absolutely um so there's a lot of yeah i you're right i'm next door now yeah and you know and for me i mean i think the biggest part of the transition here in april has just been suddenly uh, i'm not of use the way i was just a couple of weeks ago in white plains mm -hmm. and i want to be of use right um, and, you know, I'm reaching out to many places, you know, but, but here, you know, I'm one of, in a weird sort of way, I'm one of your ministers. Yeah. Um, and maybe more present now from far away than I would normally be, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. I mean, that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Month ago, we were like, we we're gonna, we we're gonna do this in June, and and now, you know, here we are. I know we we had a plan, y'all. We had a plan. <laughs> it was gonna be great. <laughs> we're still gonna but do the plan. We're still gonna do. We're, it. Still, we're still gonna do the plan. Just gonna look different. <laughs> it can't possibly be more complicated. Poor, um, yeah, it's not yeah. long ago that I was candidating, and I'm I'm looking at all of the all of our colleagues that are candidating in churches right now. And that's right. Oh, that's, yeah. If they can and do that, that, we can figure out how to. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And, I, and that is hard. You know, I think about those, those people because there is something about a person's energy when they're in a room with people and yeah. you get a sense of them that you don't get over the phone or over email or over online necessarily. And so the work of, being introduced to a congregation in that way, um, it's going to be different. Expectations are going to be different, um, you know. So yeah, my my prayers go with them for sure as they're going through that process, and I'm really glad I don't have to do that. <laughs> oh no, you're just on the UUA presidential search team, was it? Not yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. Not no, yet. we got to, not yet. They, it was um, the moderator search team that you were on. I was on the moderator there search we go. team. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and that brings up some interesting questions about how General Assembly is going to be run. We're, we're pretty sure that it's not going to be in person. Um, um, and they're negotiating. Um, yeah. I mean, they're negotiations, you know, that they, they do these contracts with these big locations and you know it, it a lot depends on who cancels and why they cancel 
about where the money gets paid or not paid or whatever. So they're working through all those negotiations, of course. But I think of all of the technical challenges, you know, doing worship online is not going to be that hard. They've got a, you know, great tech people. The que My big question is, how are they going to scale up off-site delegates when it's typically a few hundred and now scale that yeah. up to a few thousand? Um, and we've got a big election. We've got to vote in our new co-moderators, Meg Riley and Charles Dumont, who are going to be fabulous, by the way. They're a great, great choice um, yeah, for, our, for our movement at this time, especially now thinking about, right. we didn't, yeah, we even, didn't even about think that. about, right, we didn't even think about the fact that, so Meg, Meg Riley is the outgoing senior minister of the Church of the Larger Fellowship, which is predominantly online. Right. Charles Dumond was on her board um, and has done a whole lot of other things. So they have this knowledge of big church because there's like 4,000 members. They absolutely know how to do online church. And now here we are. <laughs> so it's really interesting that uh, Megan Charles are our candidates for that. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. Yep. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super curious. I'm, yeah. I guess I'm assuming that I won't be in Providence this year, but beyond that, haven't heard. Right. Um, our region still does uh, regional gatherings, so we've got that yeah. coming on Saturday. Yeah. Um, but it's it'll all be... It'll all be online. And that sure. actually may be a good test case for the UA. To yes. See, you know, how, how we do mm -hmm. a regional assembly, which will have a couple hundred delegates, but all, all off-site voting at once. Right. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, here in the Central East region, we don't do much in the way of, of regional gatherings. Um, oh. Our former districts still do some stuff together. So, um, you know, so we've got some district things that will be happening online, um, even though we don't use district anymore, but it's still district. <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. We kept the district names. Like, we went from the Joseph Priestley district and the Prairie Star district to, yeah. you know mid-america and the central east region yeah no, we're the central east region but we're still the st lawrence chapter right i mean <laughs> yep um three cheers for upstate new york <laughs> this is my home chapter <laughs> yes it is it is your home chapter i, for, no. I keep forgetting that <laughs> well, been in a lot since but but i remember yeah. st lawrence cons yeah. as a youth which is probably not a good topic for uh, <laughs> for this today <laughs> for a uh, a yeah. public and child friendly <laughs> setting oh youth cons yep. yep you know it's a good thing we teach owl <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah no but, i was in that micro cohort who came in right as owl was published and while cons were still happening there's only yeah like five or six years that that really is the case but yeah yeah I... yep <laughs> interesting <laughs> very interesting um but yeah no it's it's great um but it's going to be interesting to see how we continue to make connection mm -hmm. um and i think one of the big questions will be how what what stays when this is finally done what do we keep doing? Do we keep doing certain kinds of meetings online? Do we, do we go to an every other year general assembly? Do we, you know, what are the things that we make adjustments for? And we have no idea when that's going to be, but I think it's, you know, how do we understand our relationships and including ours, right? You know, do, does, does how I become involved in different ways with the Lincoln congregation 
continue when you're all back right full time in your in your building you know right does this change how we're connected and what i offer you and and how you support me i don't know yeah well there's a lot to figure out it's a lot to figure out and the good news is you know we don't have to know it all there is oh. and there is no roadmap we're building the road as we're traveling it we're trying stuff out clf's um slogan is always in beta so <laughs> and i think we're in beta for 60 years it's true because they're over you know but it's okay right yeah. you know we are not a we're not a faith that stays stuck in one mode um you know who was it lewis beal is that the guy's name who when asked where do universalists stand he said we don't stand we move yes yeah well, i was i was talking to somebody the other day and we were talking about how fast the, our, our churches were adjusting to this new normal and, and how quickly new things were getting spun up in a way mm -hmm. that they just haven't before right. yeah and uh and we we came to the realization that none of us right now are, have the capacity to say well we've always done it that way right <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> nobody has. And nobody. <gasps> That's right. A bizarrely freeing set of circumstances for churches. It is. It, is. it can be yeah. such a paralyzing thing. Right. right. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, Amazing. Amazing. So, you know, so I'm sure people listening are still going to be like, but what is affiliation? who knows <laughs> i mean it's a relationship it's a support yes it means that community ministers are still grounded in congregation it's in congregational yep. life in a way yep. and it provides congregations another voice and you know a yeah. bit of support when you need it absolutely absolutely which is awesome so the the last question which was supposed to be the second question but then i skipped over it <laughs> <laughs> um, but it seems like a good place to end on. Is, yeah. You know, in, in a moment where, you know, to speak for the congregation and for myself, there's, there's a lot of anxiety and fear and, and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, what, where are you finding hope and joy in these mm. days? Well, um, many places um which is surprising because it's hard you know when hope is hard to find i mean that's <laughs> that's right now and yet i i find hope in the connections that religious professionals are making with each other um there's a group for you you religious professionals and it is everybody it's clergy and music directors and religious educators and admins membership people it's all of us just figuring this all out and supporting one another and sharing information and ideas with one another and cheering one another on and that that is a huge piece of hope there's been so much struggle at times for the different kinds of religious professionals to feel like they they're being heard and supported and connected and it it's been this equalizer in a way that is lifting all boats, you yeah. know? And that has been just so wonderful to see. Um, spring is giving me hope. It's giving me, you know, congestion and runny eyes, but it is absolutely giving me, hope, giving me hope because it reminds me that, you know, there are things that life still continues. Um, one of the members in White Plains was very, very sick with COVID-19 and he's getting better. And a good friend from seminary has been very sick and she is making a slow recovery. So that gives me hope. Um, and I love British mysteries. And so I've been watching, <laughs> I've been, and, and they are fun and, they, you know, they're a bit of a brain teaser um, and a bit of escape. Yeah. Um, 
and it's nice to know that there's something there that you know where i can turn off the news and uh, yeah take care of myself with something i like yeah for yeah. sure yeah how about you what's giving you hope um you know spring it's nice out in in lincoln um which is shockingly rare yeah <laughs> um and you know, watching watching Ailish, I think is oh. is a big part of it for me. Um, mm -hmm. She takes such joy in life. You know, she she has an understanding that things are are different now because um, she can't do as much, and I think she's a little frustrated by that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and her frustration is the frustration of a two year old. So it is sure. emphatic. Um, but, you know, she, she gets new concepts almost by the day and she oh. delights in them. Um, you know, she, she figured out the other day that she, what she had been calling sharp was a knife. Oh. And sharp is a quality that a knife has, yeah. but not the name of the object. And if you think about it, that's, that's actually a pretty complex conceptual framework Yeah, that you have to learn. <laughs> it's not natural. Right. And you, you can see her like clicking through it and be like, oh, oh, other things can be sharp and there might be a knife that's not sharp. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> and, um, so there's, there's, we have a lot of those moments these days, um, yeah, which is fun. And it's just, you know, this is work week five of working from home for me. Um, but what that means is that there's a lot more time for those moments. Yeah. yeah. I still have evening meetings, but they involve me walking up to my office and closing the door instead of commuting to the right. Um, and, uh, you know, the other night in the midst of one of those meetings, I'm like, I'm looking at Zoom. I'm looking at this screen and I right. see that door behind me open up and Ayla's just walk in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and sit on that green chair behind me for a minute and then come up and, and say hi to everybody. Oh, oh my gosh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was um, it's fun. It's fun yeah. to be present with her in that way. And nice. to, to see this experience through her eyes. Cause she, yeah. I can get plenty anxious about it, but her anxieties are immediate. They are, I want to play blocks and blocks are not out. Right. <laughs> and those are anxieties that have solutions. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's, that's probably for me. Good. Good. I also just need to voice, you would not understand this at all, but I need to voice the, I desperately need a haircut anxiety. <laughs> this is getting shaggy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah See, I up. do. I do. That's, that's long for me. Oh um, man. But that involves <laughs> asking Stacy nicely if she wouldn't mind laughing yeah. my, uh, laughing my hair off. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, we all have a thing. Yep. But anyway. Yep. I do appreciate how, how many of our colleagues have embraced the the bald head look. Yes. Um, because it is indeed, it's very manageable and and uh, very suave. And, yeah. Uh, I, I've done this intentionally for the last 10 years. That's uh -huh. completely on purpose. Right, right. It works. Yeah. It works for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> it's so good to talk to you as well all. I, it's such a pleasure hello everybody in lincoln thank you so much all right. this has been reverend kimberly debus and reverend oscar sinclair for the unitarian church of lincoln we will see you soon